Hello there everyone and welcome back to Tiano the Lasses of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Mocha Lover. And we're playing as a, of course as the Republic of Ukraine, but we got to go talk about Spivator Spivator Salation. Supposed patriots spread bluster about how strong Ukraine is, ready to stop anything. Men like Alexander Oloblin are more realistic. He served as mayor of Kiev, a job that caused him to be labeled as a collaborator. He knows how Germany works, how they will not stop fighting until Ukraine is under their control. That's why he offers a solution, collaboration. Many Ukrainians certainly know this idea, calling in affront to everything they have fought for. Oloblin can only say that he is not naive. He leads his alliance of collaborators and fascists under the banner of the movement for defense against Bolshevism, prepared to do anything that allow the Ukrainian nation a chance of survival. So Alexander Oloblin will lead Ukraine to a new golden age of collaboration and prosperity. So let's see what happens, shall we? The Gift of Foresight Zubia, Stus, and Borovitz seem to be under the delusion that Ukraine possesses the arsenal of America or Japan instead of what a new country has coming out of the ravages of a civil war. Germany is undefeatable. Sadly, we are the only party that has the ability to see foresight, or the ability of foresight, the only party brave enough to tell the Ukrainian people this fact to their face. The best we can hope for is a fair deal. Our leader, Alexander Oloblin, as a man intimately familiar with the nature of compromise and collaboration. It may not be a popular thing to admit, but any moral leader must tell the people that not what they want to hear, but what they need to hear. Nice. There is conservatives, huh? Inevitability is not doom. Germany is undefeatable and is, uh, like it's, uh, uh, is not undefeatable and its turn is inevitable, but this does not mean an end to the Ukrainian nation. For collaboration can and will save us all. This is the message will spread throughout the radio waves, plastered on flyers, and preached to each Ukrainian citizen. They may react to it with the anger, but in fear of panic, but eventually accept it. That's the only feasible option left if they want their children to grow old in a land still called Ukraine. So, we're, yeah, the German remnants, of course. Uh, we're doing all right here, and we have three more options. R Barrel of the gun, what is this? Oh, election stuff. What do we have here? Predicted... Spivator seats, Culturus, and United Struggle seats. Hmm. Meet with the veterans. Attack opposition delegate. Huh. Very interesting. Socialism. Communism, despotism. So I don't know how well we can actually do this because we don't have a lot of uh, benefits here, but still. How do we get more horses? You the mayors? I'm mean, gonna hope we can win. Not really sure. Connections of the collaborators. Oh, that'll be good. Faces, faces of uh, fascism. The well, Rexcom star has been consigned to history for now, and yet the man whose careers were made from within have not faded away. These people are understandably very eager to see a party than the only one now buying for their blood win this election. Therefore, they have offered their services in the form of self-defense militias, ostensibly. These paramilitaries are formed to protect settler interests, and truth, their dealings go far beyond that. They help persuade voters that we are the best party for their safety and will also help normalize our unpopular rhetoric. Some may call this unethical, but it is the necessary price to, save, to pay to save the people from their ignorance. Hmm. In the light of the candles. The room was filled with the warm glow of candlelight as Oloblin, along with a group of po local powerful politicians and collaborationists, mayors, landowners, and members of the upper class, discussed the future Ukraine in this Spivatory party. Oloblin had attended many such meetings in the past weeks and was growing tired of the repetitive nature, but he understood the importance of getting more allies. 
After what felt like an eternity, though it had only been an hour, all of them was extremely exhausted. It was challenging to stay focused as the guests expressed their awareness of associating themselves with the spivatory, given how the growing anger among the peasantry. He searched for a way to end the, con end the conference, but how? That idea struck him. Also, oh, with that in mind, I don't think we can. Gentlemen, Olo Blin suddenly interrupted the speaker. Of course, all the concerns you stated today are valid, but that shouldn't be the primary matter of our discussion, should it? I should propose we talk about something else. Everyone looked at Olo Blin, surprised and curious. Now is my time to shine, he thought. Olo Blin continued. The sad truth is, despite the united struggle and cultures being patriots to Ukraine, they alone won't save our nation. The Germans will return, and it will be wise to negotiate with them, but neither Stuss nor Zubi will do that. The actions may alienate the Reich, leaving us with no possibility for negotiations, and that means a war we can't win. Afterward, Ukraine will be devastated and completely destroyed. Do you want to see our nation in such a state again, gentlemen? No one spoke up, and that's why it must be with the uh, Spivavtori. We're doing whatever we can here for this, but still. Removing obstacles. Ooh, growth goes down. Oh boy. Those who count the votes. The graves we dug. While the incorrect misinformation and mudslinging sadly seem to be prevalent in what should be a fair and free election as movement for defense against Bolshevism, candidates seem to be suffering from an image problem. That being an allegedly complicit complicitly in genocide and other crimes of the old regime. We'll take great diligence in issuing flyers and radio messages that correct these lies. The Bobby Yard Massacre? Alexander Oblobin was certainly not involved in such a thing. In fact, he tried his hardest to stop from taking place and per personally save Jews from being slaughtered in it. Actually, what records do you have show that this pro pogrom ever took place? We have looked through RKU archives and found nothing that supports these claims, and we would kindly advise you not to put out such deception in the future unless you wish for us to pay uh, uh, your surviving family a visit. I love it. 64. Sure, why not? What can we do here? No, all this stuff. We just have to do that too. Can't even do this one too, huh? Bruh, that sucks. We will play as all three uh, nations in the end, though. Or all three paths, including this one. So we'll see. A polite request. Key's history professor Daniel's office brim with notes, lesson plans, books, and other materials. Stacked and stuffed wherever they could fit. Organized into a madness that only made sense to its owner, with the flag of the Republic proudly hanging on the wall where Nazi symbolism once tainted the room. It was now overlooking the first draft of his next article for the university's academic journal when the office door quickly slid open. A quiet man slipped into, the, uh, into his features as he greeted the rector, which faded when he saw the man's grim expression. Professor, I see you're working on your next article. The man's face contorted like he was unsure of how to proceed. Uh, how uh, fitting, he cleared his throat before continuing. Have you heard of the discussion around your last article? I know it's turned some heads, Daniel replied naturally. Or truly, collaboration and its consequences. It's an investigation. The general analyzed and explored the role of Ukrainian collaborators in the systematic murder of Ukrainian minorities, especially Jews. He knew it was controversial, but he was proud of his work. The director entirely heaved a sigh. Some very senior figures in the government have criticized the article and claimed that it is dividing the Ukrainian people and demanded an apology or even a retraction. At the wide eyed stare of this colleague, he continued, I'll be blunt. The university just cannot afford a confrontation with these men. I need you to write an apology for the journal in your next article. Daniel was dumbstruck, then outraged, but then resigned. He weakly nodded, and the director left him to more soon to be tarnished work. History is written by those who are allowed to. I don't want us to lose anything else. 
I, I, I like the political capital, but like, still. Poker face. The office was bathed in a dreary light from the corner of the lamp as Oldo Blin settled behind the desk. An air of apprehension lingered between him and Bahazi. Evident in the desperate, worried, etched on the Bahazi's face. He handed over a list containing names, former collaborators, and officials unlawfully declared uh, by the United Struggles Militia. So his voice filled with urgency as he pleaded. These men need your help. Only your voice can save them. Hordalus, Stus, Bodovitz, every single one of these traitors' rats. You know what they'll do to our men? Oldo Blin studied each name carefully. His frown deepening the notorious reputations that accompanied them. These were people renowned for their cruelty and corruption towards fellow Ukrainians. Fear flooded him with a request, drip, sweat dripping down his forehead as he delved deeper into thought. For him, having to release these men would be an injustice to the people of Ukraine, and he found it difficult to decide. I don't know. You know these people are. Shadendrok leaned onto the table, his tone serious but measured as he warned all of them before he gets finished. We can't afford to be blamed for any deaths, whoever they be German or Ukrainian, at the hands of these militias. Germania would destroy us all. They held an oppressive stillness as he spoke, as if choked all of them himself. You need to decide the course of action right now, because we're on the last darn leg, sir. It doesn't matter. If one of them power saw the kid's head in half, if they died of their hands, we'll be the next one on the list of casualties. At that moment, he knew that no matter what choice he made, he couldn't just avoid any drastic consequences. Although Blaine could only sigh, inhaling deeply as he turned himself, or cursed himself for doing so, for turning to Bahazi's pleading eyes, right, I'll reach out to them. We shouldn't risk our cause no matter what. They never bluffed the stakes we did. Alexander Olubin may be the face most well known to the Ukrainian public, but he's not only representative of our faction. Volodymyr Bahazi, Bahazi serves as a face of fascism, a counterbalance to the moderation and conservatism of Olubin's views, and a necessary part of the machinations that allows to mobilize such a large collaboration in space. To further this goal on a larger base, Bahazi will use his contacts to pardon useful members of the now defunct Ukrainian National Council if we can get men like Pavlo Shandruk, Oleg Shtul, Mykola Stisiborsky. All that Ozinch and others on her side, though, being be incredibly useful in securing a partnership with Germany. I don't think we can win this. Honestly, if in the end, if we have to use Khan's commands, I really don't care. Or levers. From the ruin of the Ukraine, a new order shall arise. We need to start laying down the groundwork for this if we wish to be in the prime shape for Germany to accept us once they come around to us. This end will devise a very German friendly program of action one that involves mass pardons for collaborators, the establishment of businesses and corporations friendly to our government, and the reshaping of the Republic's mission to better fit the pact. All of this is necessary and all of it is needed to find a place in Germany's world. This one, please go to head. We're gonna be removing obstacles because we basically have to. We could always just cut the middleman in this situation. After all, why go to such extra efforts to maintain cordiality when we're the only party that will let Ukraine have a chance of survival? And besides, our paramilitaries are always keen to flex their muscles. The movement for defense against Bolshevism, militias, guard, and voting stations? Why we need to check the integrity and honesty of these supposed impartial vote counters and make sure nothing fraudulent is happening? The United struggles. Activists are beaten in bl uh, black and blue. Such as the danger of staying out too late at night, maybe they should stay just stay at home when it comes to election day. A cultural candidate is found hanging upside down off a lamppost with a chest full of stab wounds? Well, he should have known better than that to campaign here. You know? 
It's his fault. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is bugged. Literally, no more power to popularity. What's the point of doing these then? The old neighborhood. How do you take time to enjoy yourself after over a decade of tyranny? Months of civil war and weeks of instability? For her parents, it was sitting close to a fire while enjoying a meal. For her brother, it was getting together with his friends and war buddies and hitting up the closest establishment that served a halfway decent beer. For Kalinya, it was indulging in a bit of vanity and self-care, which in today's case meant visiting the town's barber and getting a new haircut. As Kalinya visited the end of the town, she couldn't help but feel as if something was off at first glance. All seemed normal, but she seemed a tinge of warning, like the calm before the storm. The thin sense of abnormalcy was torn apart as she made a turn and saw the town's bookstore. It looked like it had been turned into a battleground. Its store's windows were shattered, holes and gnashes tore into the wall, and the door was almost split too. Carol cannot imagine what had spurned people to violence here and did not want to know. She uncomfortably turned around, planning to go home when she saw the local grocery. She knew the owner, a proud man committed to supporting the United's struggle and anti-Nazism. The store window always had a flag of burnt swastika hung upside down. It was missing. It was missing. Kalin yet to her at home, refusing to make eye contact with anybody until she knew she was safe. As the light fades, shadows crawl closer. Not right, a deal. Um, loading the dice. Our success is already apparent in the victory of movement for defense against Bolshevism candidates in local elections across Ukraine. It is another great opportunity to make this upcoming election a bit fairer. Um, for ourselves, in these areas controlled by this great party, our candidates will have ease of access when it comes to registering as a candidate. For cultures and United Struggle candidates, there may be a slightly more difficult to, to, time here. But after all, how could any new prospective candidate forget about the new anti bolshevization Act, which prevents candidates of leftist organizations from registering? Or did you know, not know about the deposit for registering as a candidate in this area? Well, it's your not our fault if you can't afford it. We must make sure that only the most respectable candidates represent us here. Boons. Most of Fyodor's day when working at the local print store was spent staring down his barrel of a rifle. The stone-faced sneer of the brute glaring down at him was saying all that was needed to be said. His features were not German, his voice spoke the same language as his victims, yet the swastika armband around was wrapped around his bicep all the same. The man just stood there, gun cocked at Fyodor, who stood in mute disbelief at the man in front of him. The others were less stoic in the bigotry all around Fyodor. The sounds of something horrific happened to the people of Ukraine was happening right before his eyes. The partisans smashed everything they could, screaming and laughing like jackals. The printing press had been smashed, pro-United struggle flyers and posters had been slashed with a knife or torn to pieces, all while the brutes barked every kind of anti-Semitic empathat at people who were just trying to earn a living. Fyodor. Well, I'd never know why they just let him walk away. The man with the rifle wordlessly followed Fyodor as he walked, slowly made his way to the back of the store, staring silently from the back door as Fyodor broke into a sprint. It was the most frightening thing he'd ever experienced since the war, and only to perhaps be close by what happened next. After running around the neighborhood for what felt like ages, Fyodor finally found a police officer that might have been able to help. Through panning and wheezing, he angrily explained what had happened, how he'd been attacked, how his workplace had been vandalized, how the men were armed, how they were brazenly spouting Nazi rhetoric. His anger soon turned to horror as the cops seemed to scoff at him. That came the same stony look on his face as a thug from earlier as he walked past Fyodor, seemingly without an ounce of pity in his eyes. What have these monsters done to us? Fyodor thought, utterly despondent. The Ukrainian public clamors for law and order. After so much chaos, we promise to deliver this, this to them after our election. However, how we deliver them is another question. We have so many contacts, we would be ashamed to not use them here. If we were to offer to do to these Nazi insurgencies, where we offer to seize our activities against them and leash, let them unleash your dogs to war against those parties who attempt to oppose us, it would easily kill two birds with one stone. Let's make the Germans friendlier to us and the general public friendlier to collaboration. Everyone wins. Well, except for the deluded who think that Ukraine can stand on its own without Germany, but well, they'll get what they deserve. Point three, three point
I just don't think this is fair. Kotro's campaign? Like, it's ridiculously high. How high these other groups are just so high. And it goes up now. Why does it go up? They said it was going down. I was changed. I think this is wildly... Is this broken or something? It feels like it's broken. This makes no sense to me. Democracy in action. As the election season's end crept ever closer, Macalio and his compatriots along the culturalists were eager and busy with their work across the country, spreading campaign pamphlets on how to vote cards and doing their part in the democratization of Ukraine. It wasn't the most lucrative job he'd ever taken up, but it was one he took by choice and felt like the most fulfilling one he's ever had in his 22 years of life. The fruits of his labor were expressions of interest and hope on busy streets and city centers, the hearts and life blood of the Republic blooming with a new generation of free men and women. His calling also came with a perk of traveling to hidden corners of the country he'd never seen before, like the crowded streets he found himself in today. As close to Brest and Spivator territory, the murmurs on the road were accurate, but their reception to his team's presence bore no hostilities afar. However, the tremendous din of the busy urban life began to pitter away, quieter and quieter into silence. The dense crowd's hectic movement slowed to a crawl, apprehensive eyes shifting towards the ground and away from the campaigners. Strong and burly men emerged from the masses, expressions stone-faced but for wrathful gazes that fixed upon Michaelo and his party. Michaelo breathed deeply, trying to settle the fear in his stomach and think before stepping forward to meet the closest one. Friends and countrymen were coming here too. A fist ended the sense for him, breaking his jaw and ending his corporal form to the ground. For a moment, he could see the terrified faces of his friends and shapes moving towards them, and then his vision faded away. And that helps, but still... Loading the dice. Yeah, we're close to getting the majority, but not quite. Down on the descent. We are on the verge of winning the election already. We can see the power of our messaging. The values that the United struggle and the cultural movement are no longer with the people. They've been replaced with what can be described as soul-crushing apathy. Despire fear and hate are the only feelings left that resonate with the Ukrainian people. There's no le hope left within them anymore. They'll march to the voting booth and submit their vote for us, or just stay at home. It doesn't matter what the votes say anymore, truthfully. The results will be what they will say they will be. Ukraine has entered into its longest night, and the Republic will be ours shortly. Nice. I love how the AI get cheats for them. Like, come on. It's not fair or fun when you see it like this. Just a random plus 5%. Like, why? There just needs to be another way to get more political capital. There really does. So uh, it looks like we finally have majority here. The water in our hands. Here, still not. And here, definitely not. My God. For most, it was a normal Friday night in Key. The pubs were so full of bursting, the noise deafening, and the alcohol practically streaming down the streets. A night like any other, but for the three men closer to run a tiny table in the corner of a particularly dingy establishment, tonight marked the beginning of a waking nightmare. Alexander Olublin's Spivavtori. Collaboration as fascist cowards, they were storming to victory. All polls showed them firmly in the lead for the men sitting around the table, the losers of this game. It was all too much to stomach. Dude muttered, Thoras Bulba Borbets glaring at his glass, how the heck we fought? We died for these people, and then these German boot looking scum. It's not safe in the streets before us anymore, said Ziuba, drumming his fingers on the table. For fascist thugs attacking volunteers if we so much as put up a banner. We even had assassinations in broad daylight in the middle of the street. Although Blend doesn't care anymore, he knows we're done for. Vasil, any ideas? While well, speaking, Vasil stood shook his head. There's no way about it, this. He, they'd failed, all three of them. The democracy for which so many good men had laid down their lives was to be snuffed out in the cradle when the country handed back to the Germans without a fight. Borovitz closed his eyes. To remember the vision of his face, of a face he hadn't seen in many, many years. Stepan Bandura, howling with laughter, stabbing an accusing finger at him. Taras Dimitrovich, he cackled, tears streaming down his face. You blind fool, I saw through it. I would have had Oloblin's head on a spike, but you, oh you. Borovitz crossed his head with his hands and sank back into his chair. We have no one to blame but ourselves. You need way more political power to do any of this stuff, man. Man, come on.
Like, I don't understand. Attack opposite delegation. Delegation. Spiff up to our line. Popularity goes down. That literally makes no sense to me. Why would you ever do this? Minus 3.2%. To get this, it makes no sense. The ballots crack open. For the first time in history, Ukrainians voted for more than a single party and chose a leader of their own choice. From Venetia to Marupul, ballot boxes left their stations chock full of ballots, many of them unable to take even a single more. People willingly waited hours to cast their vote, while others had gone out earlier to prepare what food and drink they could make uh, uh, out their neighbors, neighbors' wait more tolerable. But not all was sunshine and rainbows. A vigorous arg arguments were heard in the houses, churches, and assembly halls. Many were disagreements, but others divided families and other friendships. An unfortunate con concomitant of polarization and democracy on the age of war. Where it was rumored that in some districts, ballot stuffing and vote buying were practiced in others. Closer to the spiv of Tory, allegedly voters were being intimidated in supporting this or that candidate. Despite all this, the nation was made its choice for the first time ever and took pride in making history. It was precious to them, its flaws notwithstanding, for not even when Kiev was the chief abode of the Rus, had the decision lay in anyone's hands but the monarch. And this heavy heady atmosphere, a front runner emerged and was selected to steer free Ukraine of the future. That front runner was none other than not that group, because I will show you exactly why that they're wrong. And you see, there's a real winner, Alexander Oloblin. Of course he won. Wh who else would win? It's Ataman of Babi Yar. More political power, a little bit worse uh, public meetings policy and you know, arrest rights policy monthly rate. More daily fashion support. If you like your bread, then please go ahead. And we've won, of course, very normally. So, Ah, oh, the good old Republic of Ukraine. Oh, look at that. Reichs protect their Poland. Oh. Foreman did win, so. Leaders of men. If one were to look at Oloblim, one would not imagine him as a commanding figure. Yet during the aftermath of an undeserved victory, <clears throat> what do you mean, completely deserved victory, the people who voted for him would not chant his name as they waited up for him. It was not the joyous cries of a rapt audience, but instead of the marital stomp of men waiting for the leader, a man who would deliver their answers. Alexander Oloblim and his top cons co conspirator, Volodymyr Bahazi walked to the stage basking in the raw energy of his supporters. If he raised his fist in the air, they would follow, all follow him. I thought that allowed a small smile to creep onto his face. He touched a microphone ready to deliver his sermon to Ukraine. Long ago, our public's predecessor's parish was torn apart by its most insidious enemies. It was not the Germans who did this. It was the Bolsheviks who trampled our flag into the mud. So his voice rose to louder proportions. Bolshevism killed our nation. Men who called themselves Ukrainians turned to rats. Parasites who hollowed out everything we loved. Even today, my opponents in this election dare to call themselves nationalists or patriots when it's abundantly clear to all those who truly love Ukraine that they are crypto Bolsheviks ready to restore a red flag. The crowd screamed insults towards Zubia and Stus, laced with accusations of Jewish tricks. This is why I argue for German cooperation, for I'm not ignorant nor in bed with communists. I'm a realist. Germany's dealt with the Bolshevik issue before, and they are perhaps the only superpower that has, making them the only country that can give us a security and the only country that can let us maintain our freedom. And this message was only met with approval and clapping by the Ukrainian audience. Like cows applauding an abattoir. Very cool. But happy October, everybody. And what do we got next? Samara's looking okay. But... In a forgotten office of the new Ukrainian Reds, three men snuck away to hide themselves inside. They found themselves castigated by the people they fought to protect, but they knew it was not the people's fault for this. That darn charlatan Olublin had and bribed his way to power, but opposition remained. Thank you, Zubia, for meeting with us today. I'm glad that no matter our differences politically, we can still find common ground. Against fascists, these frauds who sabotage our fair system, Zubia nodded along while Borovitz seemed more occupied with making sure no one was watching them than to express concurrence. <clears throat> We fought and broke the backs of the fascists before. Uh, we can do so again. Zubia's optimism seemed countered by Stus having buried his hand, head into his hands, clutching his hair for relief. Borovitz's blind and state of panic did not help matters, of course. Those fools are all going to sell us out to the Germans, the same creatures who held their boots over neck for 20 long years. Stus and Zubia banged their fists on the table in agreement. We must use any means necessary to rid these lap dogs from power, whatever it takes. Zubia enthusiastically clapped for Borovitz as they both left to go to their parties. Rally the parties. Stuss trailed along behind them, unable to shake a sinking feeling, but residing within them that the two of them seemed to have prioritized removing the fascists from power rather than continuing the democracy that they fought for. They could only focus on the task at hand for now and deal with the consequences later, of course. The Republican dream drifted into a distant memory. But we will see. There goes Indian National Congress. All Loblins. Office seemed conspicuously more luxurious since becoming president. 
Relics of an ancient Ukrainian Ukraine died of the room became the object of small talk as Volodymyr Bahazi lounged in a leather chair that once belonged to a Reich bureaucrat. The new president hushed the chit chat in the favor of getting down to business. Volodymyr, well, I must thank you again for your range of indispensable friends that have landed us into the highest of stations. We still have a lot of work left to do. All of them began pouring out drinks for both of them while continuing. These were those that opposed to our plans with a greater number of representatives in the Rada than I would care for. Bahazi was unable to stifle a laughter after the last sentence. Alexander, please, you get so caught up in these trivialities. Me and my men work like clockwork in the election, and the Rada should be a cakewalk. He took hold of his glass as he took a look, looked outside the office window. Our people are scared, terrified of reprisals, frightened of their own freedom. He flicked his head over to Oloblim. We can tell these idiots whatever we please if we, they think it will save them from another ex-commissariat. Oloblim gulped the liquor as he took out a draft. In that case, take this bill regarding compensation for German settlers to your people. See what needs to be added and who needs to be persuaded to vote for it. We'll do whatever you need to do. His lieutenant snatches the paper as he walked out in the dying lights of Kiev. Bahazi. It was met with no triumph and praise, just the cold quietness of a people cowed. It was a familiar feeling if he had missed since he was a mayor, but those days seemed to be slowly returning. As if It was as if nothing had changed. The Ukrainian National Revolutionary Army fought long and hard, and they matched their established nation defined by freedoms and powers that the German government would never have allowed. Yet, the Spivators, a party former collaborators only with limited democratic credentials, has managed to warm its way back into power. Once in Kiev as servants, the Spivators entered Kiev as ministers and presidents. President Alexander Oloblin made his first and only priority clear. Ukraine must find its way back into Germany's good graces at any cost. This Herculean task will require reshaping the Republic not towards revolutionary progress, but to fit the tastes in the far off Germania. With the NSDAP remaining as rabid and fascistic as ever, a Republic that bows to Germany can no longer be a Republic at all. The year is 1964, and without even a German invasion, the Ukrainian Revolution is already being snuffed out. But, there you go. If you enjoyed the campaign thus far, please consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow. As we'll try out the other paths. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.